Okay, hi guys, welcome back. To, hi, hi. Come back to the Malaysian Architecture Online Lecture Series, uh, proudly presented by MASA. So this is our 24th online lecture series, which is entitled Embrace the Restriction um, by architect Chu Gimwa. So again, thank you for joining us for today. So for those who are new, MASA stands for Malaysia Architecture Student uh, Alliance and is a non-profit student committee acting around oh, wow. the PAM also known as Putuban Architect Malaysia. So it consists of student representative from all um, architecture institutions in Malaysia. During this time of RMCO, MASA and PAM have decided to launch this uh, online lecture series for students to be more productive and gain more insights. Um, architect Ardienta is the head of PAM Education and Dr. Zach Zarul is the convener. Um, there'll, be, there'll be more series coming up after this, so do keep in touch with uh, Masa's Instagram and Facebook page. Okay, so my name is Guma Sylvester Makajil, a Masa representative from UCSI University, and I'll be your MC for today. Um, I would like to give a warm welcome to our speaker today, architect Chu Gimwa. He's the principal of um, Chu Gimwa Architect, and he holds an architecture master degree from Miami University, and he's a member of Malaysian Institute of Architects, PEM and um, Lamaga Architect Malaysia. Having worked in, in the industry for over 20 years, Chu is an accomplished architect with extensive design experience in private residential, commercial buildings, and mixed-use developments. He had success, successfully implemented many private residentials on hill slopes and steep terrains with minimum disturbance to the natural landscapes. Chu have also participated in many dialogues with various local authorities, including Ministry of Housing and Local Government, where he was a member of the Technical Working Committee. He also assisted the Ministry to prepare the guidelines on building buildings requirements for disabled persons. Uh, Chu is also a, A.R. Chu is also an active speaker in Malaysian Institute of Architects, PAM, and other institutions, and has conducted many designs workshop for those institutions, including workshops on design um, requirements for disabled person. So in this web webinar entitled Embrace the Restrictions, Architecture will, re um, uh, will, will introduce some restrictions can become, that can become potential to develop a unique design solutions. So before I pass the speaker, um, please remember that we will have Q&A session at the end of the talk. If you have any um, questions during the sharing, feel free to type them down in the chat box so we can attend to them at the end of the sharing. Um, that's all from me, Architect Chu. How, how are you today? Hey, fine. Thank you. Uh, okay, nice. Uh, I'll pass the floor to you now. Yeah, okay. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, thanks for, for inviting me to give this uh, presentation. Okay, um, I've been working for 20 plus years uh, work as an architect. So my background, I started actually my bachelor degree in not architecture, in studio arts and economics. You know, studio art in terms of uh, drawing, painting, sculpture, things like that. But um, after my undergraduate degree, um, I decided to pursue an architectural degree. So I was in the United States and at that time... I put it wrong. Can, hello? At the time that there was this kind of program, oh, you do it? You do it extra long program to pursue master of architecture degree. So I participated in the master of architecture degree, graduated and then came back to Malaysia. And then I started my career uh, as a young architect in Penang. Then in the late nineties, I moved to KL. And I, over the, the course of uh, my career, I work in various capacity in different firms. Uh, um, in 2008, I started out my own uh, practice to be more architect. And I've done quite a lot of uh, private residential since then. And uh, some of it is actually on a flat ground, some, a lot of them on a very challenging hill terrain. So that's why today, um, a lot of those lands, they have uh, quite some of a quite severe restriction. So that's why I named my talk to this, uh, how to turn the embrace the restriction and in that how to turn 
the restriction into something uh, wonderful. You know, um, okay. So in this lecture, I have pro I will I'll talk about three completed projects and one schematic projects. Okay, three plus one. The schematic will come in somewhere in the middle. And uh, why I chose this project because it it it, it presents a different level of uh, difficulties, but all all of them are on a pretty uh, challenging side. Um, with different sets of uh, problems and different sets of advantage and different sort of different set of uh, construction technique. Okay, we'll go to first slides. Okay, what are the common restriction? Uh, um, for example, site, uh, construction and design, any I mean, budget is always a biggest restriction. Then sometimes technology and sometimes requirement by local authorities. Okay, um, over the years of working with students, uh, many young graduates, uh, many, so what are, in short, what are students uh, like? First of all, I think in this modern context, uh, many students, they rely on rendering, you know, uh, all this fancy rendering. So because of the stress, uh, the, the importance placed on a flashy presentation, they have a they have a short understanding of a, what is a section of it. it's all about how to even build a, a, a simple section, okay. Then also from the rendering from the beautiful perspective or whatsoever three three uh, D modeling, how to translate those uh, perspective into a proper plan section elevation. This is what I find is uh, sometimes. The, very difficult uh, for it took them some most of them a long time to understand that you know. So the last but not in the last but not least is the technical details. Uh, what is a window? What is a door? Uh, how to do a bathroom? What is a roof? You know, different kind of roof, a uh, metal deck roof, or you have timber truss roof, or concrete roof, things like that. Okay, so these are the co common uh, short uh, shortcomings. Uh, so okay, um, so this uh the next this slide is about what are the important points to consider uh, before designing or during designing uh, these are some of the basic guidelines number one is always a setback every piece of land there's always a setback like every council and every state they have different setback requirements some setback is about the building from property like certain state as the number of floor goes up let's just say for high rise then you have to set back further so it, it, it depends so this one is is the is basic. Uh, you every designer, every architect should get it sorted out. Uh. If not, you'll be designing at the end. Of the it's kind of loose. Then the next thing is a uh, simple things uh, setting out the grid, setting out the grid. Simple things like uh, uh, wall to wall the dimension. Because uh, you have to remember, as an architect, we set out the grid is actually from the center of the wall to the center of the wall, not the interior designer. <laughs> Uh, between wall surface to wall surface. Okay, so it's a. Uh, then the next one is the details. Huh? Then the last one, the fourth one is the uh, circulation. More often than not, uh, the circulation is very important. In some, in some public buildings, circulation is also part of the safety requirement, fire escape, and all these things. Whereas for a lot of accessibility studies, the circulation will determine. Uh, the routing for the wheelchair user, the sign, the last one is accessibility, like what I did just describe. Yeah, so it's about uh, accessibility for person. Uh, uh, people. Okay, so this this is a design factor. What to consider during designing? Number one is a client's requirement. Very simple thing, uh, like. In commercial project, you have to look at how many, for example, in a hotel, how many bedrooms they require. Then in an office, and for example, then how many square feet of office, how many units, whether the units can be multiplied, can be subdivided, and things like that. Then aesthetic, uh, this is what I find is, uh, it used to be a big problem you know, with, with uh, client. Because uh, sometimes you ask them, what kind of look or do you want? A lot of them, they will say, some of it, they say modern, but modern is 
but we we're not talking to architect, you know, um, because in as an architect we understand modern starts from maybe more than a hundred years ago, you know, the, during the industrial revolution. But to them, to a lot of laymen, modern means something modern. So in a modern from person A may be different from modern from person B, C, D. You know, so I find that this is highly subjective. Yeah. So, but in this modern context, uh, maybe you know, with the pictures, with the uh, Instagram, nowadays the client will show you, you know, like images of this. This is what I want. You know, <laughs> so you try to figure it out. Uh. Okay. The next one is space. Uh, this is to me personally. I like to work with space. You know, what kind of space? Uh, I like to work with um, strong, simple, bold spaces. Okay. Next one is circulation. Um, I always talk about circulation because I find that a lot of people, they take it for granted. They put circulation design as the last, meaning that you have all the important space that you need. Then you have, then you design a corridor to join it or something like that, you know? So at the end, the circulation becomes very confusing or not proper, properly worked out. So, but I always thought a uh, circulation is like a spine for a human being, human body, you know, like your, your spine will connect to your arms, your legs, or your, the, the functioning of the entire body. So in fact, now in my latest, uh, some of my latest building design, I turn the circulation into some of the major design element. Uh, or in our, this new project, I turn it into some kind of landscape element. Uh, let's hope that it work out. Huh? <laughs> Okay, the next one is form. Personally, I'm quite interested in forms, you know, and uh, in form, uh, whether it's simple form or it's a triangular forms or this kind of form, some of it, this issue will be addressed later. Okay, view. This is uh, since I got an opportunity to work in some of the projects in a steep hill. So for those property in the steep hill, a lot, of a lot of them you get quite a nice view. Okay, so this is a bonus, uh, bonus. And then for those building without, without any uh, view, maybe you can create some borrowed landscape to make certain level of view. Okay, climate is uh, given our hot Malaysia climate and maybe how your building oriented towards certain direction is important. Okay, to minimize the heat gain and all these things. Okay, the next slide is, uh, I, okay, I'll start with uh, two completed projects. Then, the, then after that, I'll go to a, a design project and then I'll finish a lecture with uh, another completed project. Okay, this is a fan-shaped house. It's like a fan shape. Uh, okay, so this, I was invited to do this job maybe, maybe nine, 10 years ago. So when I went to the site, it's a very long site, long in the sense that it goes down all the way down. You know, it's, uh, and then it's not very wide. The land is about one acre. One acre means about 44,000 square feet. So it's very long. And then on site, there are two small flat platforms. The whole site is a slope. So you can see this existing flat, flat area. And then there's in a seven or eight meters south, there's another flat area. Or oh, can we move this uh, a bit? To the top or bottom, this uh, is it possible? <laughs> Sorry, the uh, no, I move the, the our, our video to maybe the top or the bottom of the screen. Because oh, you you mean the side panel where all the participants? Yeah, yeah, are. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Good. it's uh, it won't affect us though. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, you try and see if you uh, block some of the images. Uh, no, it's 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 fine. It's not blocked. Yeah. Okay, I can proceed. Huh? Yeah. Uh, okay, all right. So, and then given this challenging side, um, as you can see, this is the driveway coming into the first flat area, a small flat area. So from the beginning, we try to locate a building utilizing these two flat areas so that this is to minimize the earthwork and intervention on site. You know? And then for this side, what is nice is that it has certain uh, amount of view uh, not far away, uh, which is this uh, hill view, which is quite nice. Okay, so if you drive in here, so the first area here is a driveway, then you go to the main building through a bridge here, and then the living dining is here. And then what is fascinating about this site is that the whole site is consists of a curvilinear sort of terrain, as you can see here, curvilinear. So at the time I thought, 
how wonderful it is uh, if we can a building uh, with this kind of curvy linear shapes to, to, to try to fit into the site. So with this curve shape, it inspired us to come up with a series of curves. You can see here, first curve, second curve. I'll show you the layout plan later. And then, but the only challenging thing is uh, with this curve, then as you know, every curve, we have a center of focus, center of uh, radius, right? So which means we need one constant point of a circle, which is somewhere here. And then with this curve, we have to experiment. There's no formula uh, that tell what is, what is the radius that will work. So we try a bunch of uh, radius. So I believe that this radius is sort of like a 20, 25 meter or something into the slope. So this is the first radius. Once you have this first radius, you build a few line, curve line from the same radius. Then after that, to make the whole building, rather than like uh, you cut with a sharp angle, we try, we try to soften every angle. So we build a second radius and third radius. But this radius, the center of focus is up, is floating somewhere in the air. So that's why I show this project is, uh, I think it's not easy to come up, to set out the building. And then the third radius here, another focal point somewhere here, floating in the air. So, and then the contractor, uh, frankly, uh, done a wonderful job. I'm not sure how on earth they can set a point which is up in the floating in the air. You know? So even when you float in the air, they had to bring it all the way down to the slope to pack the point, right? Furthermore, this corner is all cantilever. So, so good job, uh, the contractor. <laughs> all right, so with this, um, you see a series, and then even the roof, we have to custom made to follow this certain radi uh, uh, radius, this curve to follow this radius, okay? It, it, because if you use a rectilinear roof, then you uh, consist of many, many pieces of like, basically like a taofu uh, huh, with many pieces, okay? The next slide is, uh, okay, you can see uh, this, this slide, Picture will show you exactly what how it looks like. It means you come the road is that you drive in here. It's a car park, a bridge into the building. The living dining is on this floor. Then you go down, it's a bedroom here. Then here is a maid's room and an entertainment. As you can see, this is a retaining wall, and then the whole side is curved. And then it's curved, and this is curved. Okay, then um, Personally, I like to experiment with staircase. Uh, as you can see in most of my project, the staircase becomes the important part of the building component. And then the space around the staircase could be also quite fascinating. Just like here, you see you have a curved staircase here coming down. Then there's a small void next to the staircase. It, give a, it provides a very cozy and uh, wonderful space. Okay, another shot of the staircase a small void next to the staircase. Yeah, so this is how it looks at night with uh, quite a significant amount of glass. So it, I thought it fits rather nicely to the slope. You know? um, okay, this plan will show you how the building was set up, okay? Um, okay, as you can see here, everything goes back to one point at the, at the back of the computer. Then there's a first curve here, second curve, third, fourth, Fifth, but the, all this is it goes back to the same point. Then the second curve is here, as I say, with another point of focus, uh, center or radius here. The third one is here with a center or radius somewhere far into the slope. So each individual wall is set going back to the uh, to the to the to the point. So with this, uh, it's actually quite become quite a challenging plan on site. And then if you look at this, uh, okay, now the the next most challenging thing during construction uh, and detailing is that this wall technically is curved. See, all these are things. But we know that if you have an operable glass, it cannot be curved. Right? If uh, each individual piece of glass is curved, the cost is going to be humongous, you know, and the whole project may not be feasible. So either with this one, so it's very difficult to have a sliding sliding glass door because it, to, to be able to slide, you need to have a straight track. You cannot have a curved track. So most of the glass, we have it segmentized and then we use a, a casement door. We use casement. If certain area we need to have straight line, that means we need to identify where the straight line is and then the rest of it is segmentized. I hope it, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, quite challenging. Uh, and then the, some, some of it, for example, when you set the, 
the radius and it goes out of the structure. You know? So it, you have to tweak the structure to, to fit the door and window. Even, for example, even things like that, even the plastering, uh, how they gonna do the plastering in curve, also not easy. You know? So I think this contractor, they have done a quite a good job. Okay, this is a section that shows you the profile of the site. This is the first flat area, the second flat area. So as I say, we, we hardly touch the, the, the flat area. Okay, we designed the building to fit in nicely. Okay, and then from this platform to this platform is roughly about seven and a half to eight meters. So for this one, uh, I think our this, this is a living dining room and then all the bedrooms are here and the maid's room and the entertainment is here. So it, it, it builds, fit in nicely to, this, to the hill slope. Huh? And then this is the curve. And then you can see some of the cantilever here, cantilever structure. Uh, this is from the rear view. From the, from the bottom of the slope looking up, you can see all the curve. Now I see these two, they are, they are casement windows. So therefore you see it has to be straight here. Then segment, it, it bend a bit, it bend a bit. So, so for each window, we have to consider separately. You know? And even the balcony handrail, we have to do segmentize. I mean, straight line, bend, straight line, bend, straight line, bend. You know? <laughs> okay, and then this is a huge cantilever. So this building is uh, the result was was quite good. It we managed to achieve the curve, and then you look at all the curved beam here. Okay, and then here is a big cantilever space, cantilever from here. That means a beam will have to go from here all the way out, four or five meter beam coming out here. So it was quite a big beam. So for it, for the engineer to be able to cantilever so so big with a curve, that is quite amazing. But during construction, the casting of the concrete structure, especially the big cantilever beam here and then the big, big beam here, it's quite challenging because engineer designed um, a lot of steel bar, a big, huge steel bar, and they are very close to one another. So contractor was say, telling me that um, even how to cast a concrete and to vibrate the concrete is a challenging task. But anyway, this is all, all done, okay? So this is the interior space. You, can, you see they managed to bend to curve the, the, the beam here. And then the ceiling is also slanted a bit. Okay, the roof, the metal deck roof is also curved. Um, so the space is, is all right, okay? The space is all right. Uh, and as you can see, these two pieces of wind, there's a straight line, okay, for these two pieces of uh, glass door. Okay, the next house is, uh, <laughs> It's a deck house. Um, this house is also in Tanarimba. Uh, okay, what is on, is on, what is different between this and the first project is uh, this one, the land is consistently sloping. There's no flat area. And then there's not much of a horizon view for this. Uh, it's all surrounded by trees. You know? So compared to the first one, uh, it's first one we have some view above and beyond. And this one, not much of a view, but it consists of a lot of very beautiful tall trees. So uh, from the beginning, the client, this one is a very prominent artist client. And he thought this is supposed to be a weekend house with uh, not many bedrooms. And, and then with a, he need an artist studio to, to do his, his artwork. So it's supposed to be uh, a house that rests in the middle of the forest. And uh, the, surrounded by trees. And then they want this house to be deeply engaged with uh, trees and forests and, uh, and the terrain. So the design perimeter is slightly different from the first project. First project is uh, on site, there's not much trees, you know, so, uh, but it has a view, but it has a two flat area. This one, no, not much view, uh, a lot of trees and uh, not much flat area. Okay, so what, uh, thought about this is uh, how nice it would be uh, for this project if we can design an infinity deck, you know, like a deck that reach far and beyond into the trees, into the forest. So this is a singular, very strong idea, which I had from the beginning, okay, uh, uh, a flying deck into the forest. So, but of course, with this idea and how to make the building works uh, is another thing. So of course, and then this, uh, uh, this building, we have to create a driveway. After creating a driveway here, 
then again, as you can see, there's some stone wall here, right? There's some stone wall. And then after the stone wall, then we, uh, this is a car park level. If we have another bridge into the building. So for this one, the building design is a bit different. Um, the living, living dining room is actually on a lower ground floor below the car park level, uh, below the car park level. So this is where your kitchen and everything is. So the artist studio is actually on a lower, uh, lower ground floor here. Okay, so it's at this level, that means you come down, then you see a flying deck all the way up. This deck is, a, is very, 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 very deep. Huh? So this building is a, not a big building. A one third of the floor area is actually balcony and deck. So this is the whole idea. Okay. Because in Tanarimba, in generally in, 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 in this kind of setting, most people will spend their time outdoor. You know, uh, they seldom spend their time indoor. So the outdoor space like balcony and terraces is more important than any other indoor spaces. Okay, so this is another view of it. So as you can see, you, you, you arrive on the ground floor, then you go down, you take a series of steps, staircase to go down on the living room here. So the living room here, and then this is very far and very deep, very long deck, reaching all the way. Uh, it's partly cantilevered into the forest. You can see that you can literally touch a tree, you know, and touch a leaf, so which is quite nice. So and then there's a there's a small living room, small dining room, small kitchen, and then the master bedroom is here. Master bedroom is here with its own uh, balcony here. So the the whole 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 building is have a flat sufficient and abundant outdoor area for the owner to enjoy the out, outdoor activities. Uh. Okay, and then. Uh, Okay, another way, which is uh, even though um, it may look like a steel and glass building, we, but we fully incorporate the tropical design feature. As you can see, the aluminum over here. So, which means uh, the, the cross ventilation, the hot air can always rise up here. You know, hot air is uh, here everywhere. So, it's, uh, it's, and then this building is lifted up from the ground. So, this is a perfect example of a tropical design, but in a sort of uh, uh, modern and contemporary interpretation. Okay, uh, and as you can see, a lot of people may ask, you have plenty of glass, it's true, but we have a bit of, uh, we are spoiled a bit in, in, in Janabai because it's in the middle of forest. So we can get away with slightly more glass because the temperature is slightly more moderate compared to KL. I think if KL, I have to be quite careful about so much glass and maybe cut it down. <laughs> okay, so this is some of the deck, as you can see glass, glass, and the stack is coming down. Uh, Louver aluminum screen, louver on top, and then the deck beyond. Ah, then this is a beautiful deck. And this is a, a, a dining. This is a small bedroom here, and then there's a master bedroom is here, and then the master bedroom balcony. So uh, this master bedroom is quite nice with its own private balcony. Okay. Um, okay, so this is a sketch from the beginning, the original concept. So as you can see, a car park, bridge, then this is a living room. Uh, this is a uh, infinity deck. Of course, we try to have a, a, a very, very deep, deeply slanting column, but uh, engineer objected. So later on, it's not so, not so slanted. Uh, I'll show it to you. Okay, so this is a sketch from beginning, you know, like a, a deep deck here. Oh, this is the original concept. It's like a living room with an infinity deck at the top. To the, all the way to the back, now, and you can uh, it's resting amongst the trees and things like that. A very big, a very tall, tall space. Okay, so as you can see, these two slides here, a freehand sketch here, and this uh, final section is quite quite the same. So I'm very happy. Uh, it's quite the same, except this column. I, I I had it like like slanting like that, but engineer objected strongly, so I have no choice but to push it back. <laughs> To only about 17 degrees of things like that. So this is a deep roof overhang because this one, the roof slanted this way is to maximize the view up here, the three uh, three views here. Okay. Okay, from this slide you can see the under 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 uh, from the the structure underneath. So as I say, this is a there's a dining here, there's a guest room here, master bedroom balcony here. And this is the RP studio. And you can see that this deck is actually supported by a mixture of a combination of concrete and steel and wood, you know. So that um, my whole intention is to make this deck 
look as light as possible. So it uses a combination of steel, steel beam, eye beam, and then a wood, wood beam and all these things. Uh. So this is an interesting uh, challenge. Uh, and, and, and we managed to make this look quite light, you know, like as you can see. Yeah, you can see this all look fairly light. Oh, then this is an interior view of the living room with a staircase. As I say, um, from the first project, it's always my interest to see, to design a space engaging the staircase. Huh? I thought staircase will, form, will, will help to form a beautiful space. And then this is just very simple, co commonly available furniture. But you know, with landscape, staircase with a generous space, I think the space is quite wonderful. It doesn't have to be fancy, but it's, it's wonderful. Okay, this is a design project which I did in, uh, this one is uh, highly conceptual in Batufingi Penang. Batufingi Penang. Um, why I choose this project? Over the course of my career, I've designed many, many individual uh, houses. And then this project is a project uh, for bungalow development. It consists of uh, multiple units of bungalow on a very steep terrain. And the reason why I choose this is uh, this is truly testing the embrace, the restriction, this, this idea, you know, um, because this is located on a very steep hill in Batufingi. Uh, probably all of you know where Batu, Batufingi is. Um, it's, not, it's not right next to a beach, it's, uh, it's on a hill above the beach, you know. And then uh, when I was when I was in, invited to design this project, um, the planning was done by another guy. Uh, planning was done and approved, and all the land, the bungalow land, was already subdivided, and then the road and drain was already approved by JKR. So there's nothing I can do. You know? So I, the only way I will just try to make the building as uh, as uh, fitting as possible to the terrain. Number one, number two, as nice as possible. Uh, and then number three, hopefully some of the units uh, at certain floor will have sea view, you know, so that uh, to, to maximize uh, the site um, condition. So you can imagine uh, when for this project, uh, each building land, the level is dictated by the road, by the road level outside it. And the road level, uh, the local authority, they approve like a very gentle road level, which is like, I believe, for 1 to 12. 1 to 12 is like the gradient of a uh, ramp for OKU. You can imagine that. Huh? But in this kind of terrain, uh, at, 1 to 12, well, at 1 to 12, so that means the bungalow land would involve severe uh, earthwork. So, with this, um, that's why I'll try to show you. Uh, it was a very interesting project, very challenging. And I believe that the design was quite encouraging and given the very tough site constraint. Okay. So, and then generally, and in this kind of context, there are a few building type. One is the uphill, one is the downhill. So the uphill, I would say I will call it type A, lah, huh? the downhill is type B. So there's a, a few type A and a few type B and, and then which I'll show it to you quickly. So this is a view like, it's a, as you can see, each one is, is uh, ascending, uh, each building platform is ascending, ascending. Then this is the a roll of houses behind, okay? Okay, this is a type A, this is a going uphill. Um, because all these things uh, we are designing according to the approved condition by uh, the local council. You know that means uh, the number of story is all fixed. I, I cannot change that. So for example, this type, uh, if they approve have uh, three and a half floor, I, I need to design to three and a half floor. I cannot change it to four, five, or six story things like that. Anyway, so this is the first type that's uh, going uphill. So this is a uh, bear, bear in mind. Uh, this project uh, is very different from the. Uh, the first two projects I show you. The first two projects, each one, the, the site is, uh, each site is about one acre big, you know. So basically you almost have, you can locate the building anywhere. This one is fixed. 
each side is a limited size. You know, it's a very compact urban land. And, you know, land in Penang is super expensive. And uh, so we, we have to uh, subject to a very strict setback requirement. Okay. So as you can see here, okay, we start with this slide. Um, the ground floor is, there'll be a lot of retaining structure because it's embedded inside the, the hill. So there's nothing much we can do on the ground floor. We have mostly car park and maybe one guest room. Because of the four-story nature, we need a lift uh, to, for the occupants to go up and down. So the living dining is all this, at this floor, living dining kitchen, and then we have a swimming pool here. So this is the attraction. Uh, you have living dining next to swimming pool. And then this is one is, uh, is the floor is a typical bedroom, a few, uh, a couple of bedrooms. And then the master bedroom is all here. So for sure, because it's elevated up at the master bedroom level, you, you get a sea view uh, for most of the houses. Yeah, whereas uh, in, depending on the terrain, some in some houses, you can maybe get some sea view here, maybe. Okay. So, and then this one is a very strong boxy form. Uh, and then with, but in order to tone down some of the boxy form, um, we use a lot of tropical material like timber and maybe some stone. Hopefully there is some stone on site we can recycle. So to make it uh, look warm and cozy, okay. Uh, but this building was designed five, six years ago. So you, it, it was uh, trying to fit the design requirement back then. Okay. Um, next slide. Uh, this is the this type is from the type A one. Of course, this is presentation. That means you can see the dining and living, a uh, deck, and a, and an infinity pool here, which I thought. You, you can encourage, this is quite nice, you know, uh, but not every uh, bungalow will have infinity, infinity pool, you know. Okay, the next slide is, okay, this is uh, A2 also going uphill. Why I show this type, um, there are only two, two plot of land with this kind of formation. We design this kind of uh, building form as a result of the land, because the land is uh, basically a triangle piece of land, you know, it's a, um, so we, after setting back, we find that actually this is the shape that we can get. We cannot do rectangle, we cannot do anything. And then to, as again, to maximize the land use, to optimize and maximize the land use. So we, we have no choice but to adopt this kind of form. But what is interesting is that, as I say, again, try to adopt, uh, try to change, to turn the restriction into opportunity. Um, we thought, to turn this triangle area, which otherwise very is, was very difficult to turn it into a usable space, to turn in, this into a circulation. You know, it back to the notion that I tried to experiment with a staircase circulation and staircase combined with circulation space and things like that. So we completely turn this corner into a circulation and then all the habitable usable space and at this corner. And then this one is at the front of the development, which means it's quite at four story high. It's elevated above most of the neighboring houses. So which means uh, chances are quite good that most like definitely on the highest floor, you get a sea view, maybe on this floor, you know, and things like that. So we design at the highest floor, as you can see here, like a cantilever terraces. All right, so that imagine you are here, you can enjoy the sea view, why not? Huh? And then again, all this, uh, we are facing the morning sun. So we design a series of timber louver, you can open and shut. So this is, a, again, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a new concept, but we try to adopt it uh, to fit this requirement because this one, you get a, a morning sun. So, in, but also when you are here so high up, even though you enjoy to, to get some privacy for these uh, occupants, we also did to put in some kind of teacher wall here, so that if, when if you if you put a bathtub here, you put a bathtub here, you enjoy the view, or you do all your private activity here, you are, you you have certain level of privacy covered by this uh, teacher wall. Then we have another terraces at the bottom, so it it works. I think uh, it works quite well uh, given this very odd shape of land. Okay, um, I'll show you some of the interior spaces. Uh, see, that's why I say this uh, triangle piece of land, triangle piece, uh, triangle corner, we turn into this uh, very beautiful staircase, uh, staircase tower, you know, but it's three story tall. 
So this one is from the first floor, living dining room, it goes up to the first bedroom floor here, right? Then it comes and you go around here, you go out and I'll floor to the master bedroom floor. But there is a lift, uh, definitely there's a lift. So this void, I think it, will turn, it can be turned into something quite nice. Uh, there may be a grand piano here, things like that. But of course, knowing that the amount of sun coming into here, that's why we thought we put in some kind of screen. Okay, um, so this is the, how the initial concept was. Uh, uh, as you can see from the staircase, looking at the area, it's quite lovely. But of course, uh, looking at it, we know that, uh, I know that too, the cost is, could be an issue uh, because you have glass floor, steel floor. So you have to work it out. Uh. Okay, this one is uh, highly, highly conceptual. This project is at the highest platform of the property. It only have about three to four units. So as you can see, but this is a, uh, again, we follow the planning, planning condition, planning approval condition. You know? um, the ground floor, which is here, is elevated high above the, the car park. And this is allowed, you know, because on site, as I say, the road determine the entry level. The road, which is here, it, that's the best they can allow, you know to come in here and therefore it's impossible to have any living room here. Not even like the, the, the other type, as you can see the living room is on its level. So even the planning permission allow it to elevate the living level up, but we push the limit, we elevate this one is really high up. So the living dining is here and then this is a staircase tower and a lift tower. So you can come out here, living dining here, and then the bedroom, a few bedroom here, and this is a two-story void uh, living dining space. And what is fascinating is here, this is a, a, like a architect's dream project. Huh? <laughs> so the living, the master bedroom is here with a private swimming pool. It's a fantasy, uh, um, which I showed you. That means at this elevation, I'm very, very sure um, that each floor you get uninterrupted view because it's so high up. But the cost of building all these things, uh, the engineer have said it's possible, but the cost is maybe, it may be very, very high. Now. So I'm not sure if eventually this kind of design, is it feasible? Um, I think they have to decide. Okay. Uh, this is the, it's almost like a, a fantasy, a dream house. This is a master bedroom here. And you, it's a, the whole floor is a master bedroom. You come out, you have your private bathtub, a deck, then your private pool, maybe private jacuzzi. Here you can look out into the Batu Fringi beach. So this whole floor plate is for the master bedroom. I guess someday that if for uh, 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 maybe Tony Stark or a super rich person, maybe it's feasible. Okay, this is, uh, as I say, this project, we constantly push the limit, you know. Um, this is one of the earliest concepts of the Just Now, but just to show it to you how much fun the architect and designer uh, uh, had this one. But of course, with the kind of cantilever, is I think quite impossible. Uh, but anyway, for a few days, we had a lot of fun uh, playing with this. Okay, if you look at this slide, this is uh, just how the A83 type bungalow. We have three, four, three of them. And guess what this structure is? Can you guess? Is it a building? This is actually a water tower, water, water tank, water reservoir tower. You know? We, as a designer and architect, we have a bit of fun. We thought we tried to make this an architectural work. Huh? So we have a, some kind of feature wall here, we have screen, so that this one, it matches, it sort of like, resemble the look of some of these design elements. Okay, so I can show you this. This is how a water tank would look. It's a conventional water tank we have with. But when the client and the QS learn about the cost of this, they almost pass out. So it didn't happen. So at the end, we may stay, stay with this kind of water tank. So this is a TNB substation, you know. Um, so we also try our best to design a TNB substation. Uh, because again, the, the land is a very odd shape of land. So we try to turn the odd shape land into something quite quite interesting uh, and with uh, this kind of uh, slanting crazy form. 
Okay, this is two other elevation. Okay, this is the final, uh, this is another type, which is on uh, the sound. Uh, this is downhill. This one is more compact. This one is more compact and uh, it's going downhill. It compared to just now the type A is about three and a half floor. This one is three floor, but from the road, you only see two floor. That means there'll be a retaining wall underneath here. Retaining wall underneath here, that means above on the basement, there's another floor here. So as you can see, this one, it, it engages the site also quite well. But this compared to A, you may not need elevator lift because when you enter, then you go out one floor to the bedroom, to your master bedroom, or you go down one floor. So you always go up one floor, go down one floor. And so I think you don't need a lift. So the, it's, the circulation and, and, and the accessibility is quite, quite simple and easy. Okay, and then looking at this, uh, but the only thing is this one, the height is quite low, so uh, you may not get much of a view, uh, okay. So this is some of the open plan design, okay, of the master bedroom and master uh, bathroom. Okay, so this is some of the, the master plan of the, this uh, development. Uh, this is uh, going downhill, the brown color is going downhill, it's going three and a half, four, uh, going uphill is here. Going up here is here. The two the two boat shaped building is there are two they are located here as a green, in green. So the um, super tall building the four of them are here, okay. And then the fancy water tank is here. So just to get a view of it, this one uh, the site condition. Okay, this is what is uh, the site section. This so this is the super tall building that you saw. So actually the first floor is actually high above the terrain you know the, the road is here you can see the road is here it's, there's a circulation this is what was approved and then some of the unit as you can see this for this unit is really high above this guy so for this unit you can off three floor you have view right whereas for for this this unit which is the a you see to overlook this the only the highest floor you get a view Okay, so it's for we have to look into this lot by lot and to, to determine uh, what is the best. So from this, uh, maybe it may affect the selling price. <coughs> okay, this is some of the 3D modeling. So this is the two units, as you can see, the formation of all these different units as it goes up. So we have uh, it was uh, we have quite a bit of uh, time, a good time working out on this. As you can see, some of these they are tucked behind this unit. You see some of this unit they tucked behind here, and then this unit is looking above. Another shot. Okay, the final project is this uh, Canvas Hills House. Recently, this project was published in Up Daily and quite a number of uh, internet you know website. Okay, this one is again, uh, now we're back to Jandabai, where they have one acre of land. This one on site, there is um, a small flat area. And then uh, right from the beginning, uh, we thought of engaging that flat area to create a series of building with a courtyard in the middle on utilizing the small flat area that we have. And then, of course, this one, the client is a prominent artist. So he needs certain uh, artist area for ex to display his artwork to his family and friends. And then also he need a guest room, but on a separate wing. So meaning that uh, when he's away, the guest room can, any of the guests, he can continue to occupy the guest room. And then his own um, uh, bedroom wing and living and dining room floor. And then the various component is tied by a corridor with a courtyard in the center, which I'll show to you. So in this one, we we finished it, I think, one and a half, two years ago, one and a half. So we experiment with a lot of uh, different detailing, uh, like balconies, staircases, handrail, fencing, all sorts of things. Again, um, the client is another uh, prominent artist. So he's quite open-minded to different kind of uh, detailing. And then he also prefer this very raw aesthetic uh, look. So he don't mind raw concrete, even wall not plastered, even the imperfect wall, or he, he, he love it. 
Okay. So, and then you can see this, this building. Um, this building, it has, on three sides, it has a very nice forest view. And one side at the end of it, uh, where the swimming pool is, it has a beautiful Genting, Genting resort view, which is very far away. So a series of balcony and terraces is created to, to, to maximize uh, all these views. Uh. Okay. As you can see here, it's located on a hill and uh, surrounded by trees. So this is quite wonderful. That's why we have a series of balcony here. And then this one is also the morning sun coming in here. Morning sun. So the balcony will also help to provide some kind of sun shading. And then the roof is also slanting towards the east. Down, slanting down. So that to help to, 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 to overcome the morning sun. And then uh, uh, this side and the pool side here is all looking at the Genting view. So this is the ultimate view. So this is the corner where owner and the guests spend most of their time sitting here, sitting here, drinking tea, looking at, uh, talking and things like that. Okay. okay, so this is the entrance. The entrance is at the, at the rear here, at the rear. So this is a driveway as you come out here, driveway coming out here, then turn around, then you reach some kind of this, this arch here. Okay, you see the driveway coming out here. Uh, the driveway coming out here, you reach here. And this is the entrance arch. And then this is the main building. At the basement here, there's an artist studio basement here. And then this is a living dining floor. This is the owner's uh, bedroom. About There's a couple of bedrooms, master bedroom. And then the guest room, there's one wing here. Okay. So this is a sketch of how the space would look like. I mean, you, you go up here. All right, this is a living dining staircase, living dining here. And then master bedroom and two other bedrooms here. This is the artist studio. And then this is a pair of uh, a pair of guest room here. Okay, as you can see, the slope is coming down here. We create a series of slope. And then this is the small flat area that I mentioned to you about. So we again we engage the flat area here to turn it into something something useful and something wonderful. Huh? Okay, so these are some of the two slides. Uh, as you can see, this is a driveway going up, driveway going up. So this is the stone wall, all recycled from site you know, during excavation. So they use back the stone here. So this is a, a three-story building, right? This is the artist studio, living dining room, and bedroom on top. So this one, it has extended balcony, right? Because to enjoy the view and also to, to for sun shading. This is an artist studio. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, we experiment with different kind of detailing uh, on staircase. So, so it's funny. Uh, owner always think that he he is now our guinea pig. We try on him. Okay. Um, okay. So this is the internal staircase. Okay, internal staircase. You see this. We instead of one I beam, we cut the I beam into two, right? Then we align the two I beam. If, so the cut into two, it becomes two T section, you know, D cut. So with this two T cut, we put somewhere, we allocate somewhere in the middle. Then we design a series of folding steel plate that serve to support the timber, timber, uh, the timber slab on top. So as you can see here, it's like a butterfly. So this D cut. There are two number of them. It goes all the way to the to the support, uh, the horizontal support. This is the internal staircase. So for the external staircase, we try out another approach, but also using an I beam. But this time, a single support. We did not cut it, and then single support without any column or vertical support in the middle. So this one we try a few times, you know. Then I remember after putting up this column, one of my uh, young architect went up there. It would jump up and down. You know? So thank God uh, it didn't fall. <laughs> so as you can see, this is a single support here. And again, we use a fold, fold uh, a folding steel plate here. Then we try, you know, folding steel plate. So it looks like a like a spine or something like that. This this folding is like this. So for this this project, we try a few type of things. Then okay, so this is the balcony I mentioned to you. So you imagine every morning we wake up, you come and enjoy this uh, uh, nice jungle view and a bit of horizon view is really lovely. 
okay? And then this is some of the column, steel I-beam column. We clad it, we use certain kind of uh, material to clad it, beam board to clad it, because some of the column we have uh, wall lights, you know, we have wall lights here, so we clad it. And then this kind, again, we experiment with a balcony, can deliver steel and timber. We use a, a combination of steel and timber uh, to create a uh, nice, even the handrail, we try to use a wire mesh, expanded metal wire mesh. But again, if wire mesh alone, it may look very harsh, you know, if you're all too much steel. So again, we have uh, where our human body touch the handrail, we have a line of timber. So we use timber quite selectively um, where whenever your body uh, your, your body touch the thing. So, uh, so we use a line timber. So when your hand touches it, it's not so cold. So this is a timber cladding here, okay? This I mean, uh, okay, so this is the terrain, okay? This is the entrance. As I said, the artist studio, living dining room, uh, bedroom, and the guest room is here. This is from another side, you can see here, the entrance. So this is a courtyard between the two wings, okay? And the owner eventually turned, there was an opening here. He decided to turn it into a, more like a, sort of like a Chinese design kind of round opening, but it turned out to be quite cute. As you can see from here, all right? So we have a courtyard of maybe seven meters here, seven meter wide. So this living dining and the guest room is here and the bedroom is here. So this is, Quite nice that uh, even you can imagine in a in a in a hilly terrain you can achieve this kind of concept, which is quite amazing, uh, which uh, I'm quite happy with. So this is a okay. This this swimming pool is at the far end of this. It's somewhere here. Okay, so this is a uh, the client's favorite corner. You can sit down here and entertain your client. Then looking out to Genting, this is a master bedroom. So this is the living room. So this is very slim volume here, about slim volume. We have both side glass. So which is quite lovely in terms of ventilation, you have a lighting, everything, it can be achieved quite nicely. You both side, you have different kind of landscape view. Okay, thank you very much. I'm done. <laughs> thank you, AR2, for that uh, very interesting sharing, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's, I've designed, as I say, many, many houses. Uh, it's, I choose this because it represents uh, the most diversified kind of set of challenges. Huh? So uh, hope that it, uh, you will sh shed some light or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I learned, for me personally, I learned quite a lot because uh, for our, this semester, our site is on the slope side slopey hill side so uh, oh. i learned quite quite a lot from oh, thank this. you thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um yeah okay um so uh if there's any questions you guys may uh put it in a chat section so we can uh tend to it um i have a questions for myself like um the what sort of foundation do you use for like uh, slopes, slopey side. Uh, what kind of foundation? Uh, it depends, you know. Um, the foundation de design it de depends on the quality of the soil underneath it. You know, um, like in some of the cases, I've designed uh, hill slope houses all over uh, Malaysia, from Johor to Penang to KL to whatever. So it varies tremendously. Um, but in those cases that you saw, it's uh, just because the soil quality was very good. So they, uh, we, uh, we were able to use conventional RC footing only. You know? But I've done one project in the Bukit Tengku KL. The quality of soil is very porous, very porous. I mean, and then the, the rock for formation at the lowest level is the, I was told, is some kind of very soft stone, you know. So they need to use a super expensive micro piling. That means they drill all the way in, you know. So that is cost tons of tons of money. So it depends. It depends on the quality of the soil. And then, and, and many years ago, many, many years ago, I designed a house where there is a rock, you know, uh, it's like half of the hill is a one rock. You know? 
the whole land, uh, half of the land, uh, half of the one acre land is one piece of rock. Things are there you would not know until you start your excavation you know, or you start doing your soil uh, investigation. So what happens is they have to design a footing and then they have to adopt some kind of uh, between the footing and the rock uh, because you cannot hack the rock. Very dangerous. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, they epoxy the steel bar into the rock. You know, so meaning that the, your footing will not slide. You know, you know you, no matter how good the field the build, uh, footing is, if it's slide, then that's it. Now you're building. <laughs> you know, so it, it depends tremendously. Huh? Some, some say, and some is because of the condition is very steep. Even though your soil is good, you still need to use the expensive filing system because simply because the excavator cannot get the site to, to dig in. Mm. Uh, so it, 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 it depends on many, many kind of conditions. So, but every, every time you have a hill slope condition, you always prepare a little bit more budget just in case. <laughs> Um, I, I, from what I see from the sections, most of them are using pad foundation, is that right? Most of them. As I said, uh, all these three projects, they are located in, 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 in the same similar property, but, but they are like some, a few kilometers away. So the soil quality is quite consistent, you know. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, we have... Um, uh, we have one question from the chat uh, from okay. Prithika Gunalan. Sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, this question is, what inspired you and gave you the drive for experimental designs like this and how daring are the clients these days when introduced to ideas like this? Ah, very good question. <laughs> this is a... Uh, first question is, uh, what drives the, the idea? Actually, I've been in the business for a long time, almost two and a half decade. Um, and I find that uh, over time, um, um, as I say earlier on, um, okay, back to basic. Say, if I'm assigned a project, first of all, you got to check out the site, you know, no matter how big or small the, the project is, because I believe every site is different. So, but unfortunately now it's an MCO, uh, not easy to get around. But if you can, you go to the site and feel the site. It's very important. You, know? you can feel, you know, you can look around, see any funny thing, good things, ugly things. Then when I look at the site, um, okay. no, because, um, with a bit of experience, uh, sometimes I'm able to conjure up some idea or images of some kind of, not necessarily the whole building, you know, but some, what are the important points of this project? For example, I look at it, uh, some, some area I may thought I want to have this kind of, uh, for example, uh, for the deck house, uh, this kind of flying deck. You know? Then for this, uh, look at the fan house, it's like, uh, I could imagine it's like a, a shape of a fan, like that, a building, something like that. Then, uh, but I say I like to work with uh, uh, circulation. Now I'm working on a project and, and, and circulation is all half open, half landscape. You know? uh, so half landscape and then you, I, I only enclose certain key area. That means the, the bedroom, I, of course, I need to enclose it. And then the living dining, I enclose it. You know, it's like, it's like, you, it's like a bubble diagram, but you push it the other way around to turn it into... To, to make the bubble diagram a reality, you know, you're, when you're a student, you design bubble diagram, at, at the end, it will, will not work most of the time. So it's this kind of thing, la, and I hope it, it works. And then, um, and then every project, I try to experiment with certain kind of ideas, certain kind of detail. For example, previous projects, certain detail, there's a bit of a flaw, maybe, that's, or doesn't turn out to be as good as I thought. So you need to keep trying. La. Then you're right, then coming to experiment with owner, this is a, another million dollar question. <laughs> um, every owner is different. As I say, way from the beginning, most owner that I, I, I talk to, they have different understanding, different under level of understanding. So what is a vernacular, you know, what is a tropical? Some owner, they tell you they want tropical. Then they, at the end, they, as you go, work along with them, actually it's not tropical, they want, you know, it's something else. But it, to them, it's tropical, but to you, it may be something else. 
So it, this level of communication is has to be established from the beginning, lah. You know, but I, these days, um, I guess with the Instagram, Pinterest, maybe it's help, 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 helpful, lah. Because before the client come and see me, they already have a hundred images of what they want. Yeah. So sometimes that is also a double edged sword, lah. You know, it can help, or it can make them even more confused, you know? <laughs> right? Yeah. You cannot have everything, like You got to make up your mind. You know, it's like you cannot have a, 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 a Western jacket with a Chinese pants. You know? It will look a bit funny. You know, like things yeah. like that. So, um, but communication with clients is very important. Uh. This one I cannot tell you how. You have to be patient. Uh. Communicate with them. Talk to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speak to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to pick their brain, you know, and then these at the, at the same time try to understand you. you know. For this, the last two projects I presented, uh, the deck house and the, and the canvas hill house, uh, they were two different artists. So I was quite lucky in a sense that uh, yeah. the artists, they are quite creative people. They the level of understanding and appreciation of certain design is probably a little bit higher. Lah. I but uh, nowadays, I find a lot of other clients, they also have a good level of understanding, you know, especially the younger one, the younger client, those are maybe in the 30s, 40s, who want to build their dream house, their level of understanding is not bad. You know? they, they come in, they know what they want. And so not too bad. Huh? <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. So it all depends. On Thank the you. All right. Um, okay. The next question is from Tan Jia Hong. Uh, Sid, thank you for an interesting talk. Is the roof for the A3 type house using steel beam plus concrete clad? Ah, oh, wow, well, you guys are very good, huh? The shop. <laughs> <laughs> that one is just a conceptual model. We haven't got to that, you know. <laughs> because uh, I think obviously for that project, the, the cost is too prohibitive. It's, it's gonna be through the roof. Huh? So uh, that's why that one is just a concept. Uh frankly, I'm not sure it, how feasible it is because you can only stay on the top three floor and yet you have to build the the, the bottom five story up, you know. So and then the, the slope protection measure, the retaining wall is gonna be really expensive. Good question. Um it could be either way. It could be either way. But my idea was if it's possible for that roof to be as slim as possible. So you are right. When I was working with the uh, architect uh, Uzai Fahan uh, on this, uh, um, we, we we contemplate on different time. You know, if you use co uh, concrete, of of course you'll be nice. You get a concrete texture, but then you see the brown box there. It span over ten meters. You know, so for ten meter of a of a beam, uh, you gotta have at least eight hundred to a meter. You know? So you won't get that kind of slim look. You know? So the only slim look is, is I can achieve, maybe I use metal structure, but still because the span is 10 meter, it won't be very slim. Nah. Exactly how it is looking at it, it's probably have to be like some kind of steel structure. Nah. You know, if this were worse design. <laughs> yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, let me just check. How um how practical is the uh, to build a infinity pool like what one of the uh, the SketchUp um pictures just now? I see like a infinity infinity pool. Is it very expensive to build something like that? Probably <laughs> because every time you can deliver the, the amount of steel bar that they use uh, is crazy uh. And also uh, I noticed it was cantilevered. Like, I know, I know. That's why that was a model that was, frankly, like a really like students project. Uh, you know, oh, okay. you do anything you want without much of a technical consideration. I think I believe that was uh, from the very beginning, you know, and we just thought we'd do it for fun, a quick one, just for fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, uh, to really can deliver that. I think you will need a I mean, maybe a two meter deep beam or something like that. And then again, the cost will be too. And it will be very, very expensive. Super expensive. Super expensive. So, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a student's project, uh, that one. 
No, because this presentation is more mainly for students. So I thought, yeah, it's I go into a bit more conceptual, you yeah. know, something more dreamlike. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, it will, it will be more exciting or interesting, you know, rather than uh, going to a very technical thing, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, looks like there's no more questions. Uh, all right. Um, thank you again, AR2, for the very interesting sharing. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. There's one more questions, uh, from Howie. Uh, how to control? How do you control the craftsmanship of the curve slab? Is it really hard to do a perfect smooth curve for a slab? Um. Yes, curve slab. Curve slab is not so difficult because it's just a flat. Just imagine you have a piece of cardboard, you know you try to cut it to the shape that you want. That one is not so difficult. But the curve beam and column, column, it doesn't curve. Beam, like I mentioned to you for the first building, it, the beam is curved. Uh, that one is very difficult because before you can cast the curve beam, you need to have a curve formwork, you know, correct? The plywood formwork, you have to bend it you know, to the proper shape and radius. Then after that, you need to bend the steel bar, right? It's pretty difficult, you know, bend the steel bar. And then, and then you know that for the curved beam, there are many, many steel bar. And each one of them, you have to bend to the perfect radius. Then after that, you will pour the form book, you know, sorry, pour the concrete, right? Then after pouring the concrete, you need to vibrate it for a certain amount of time. You know, then it, after that, you let it set and cure. So after, say, a couple of days, one week, you remove the formwork, uh, then you see the, the rough, the, the shape of the beam. Then after that, you use some kind of plastering and eventually skim coat uh, to, to do it. But for this one, I think the workmanship, considering it's on a steep hill, that means imagine even to create a formwork for the worker to stand surrounding the, the construction site also not easy you know, because as you can see the, the section uh, it goes deeper and deeper you know? <laughs> right so the, your formwork may be 10 meter tall or things like that you know so for them to, to, to plaster the curved surfaces is frankly is not perfect not perfect but given the context that it is a uh, curve and then it is on a steep hill I thought the workmanship was okay was not too bad uh, you know not too bad uh, so uh, it's something like that. Uh. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, once again, thank you. Uh, thank, you thank, then, thank you. Thank you for everyone for joining us for today. Yeah, uh, thank you, Kenji, uh, helping me to, to put up a slide. <laughs> <Can see? laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, thank uh, you. Thank hope, you. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, so do keep in touch with us with our Masa's Instagram and Facebook for the next one. And until Till then, have a nice day and we'll catch you guys next time. Okay? Yeah, see you all. Okay. Thank you, Archie. Yeah, bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>